Up at Noon is brought to you by Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 2, available to download now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Up at Noon. Yes, one more standalone interview episode. Don't look at her yet, because I'm still giving introductions to what's happening. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Up at Noon, of course. IGN's weekly talk show Eh, Daily Show ripoff. Uh, usually there's a, bu <laughs> a bunch of jokes, but we didn't want to leave you hanging over the holidays, so we gave you a couple interviews. Chris Daniels last week, and now, as I live and breathe, Melissa Hutchinson. How are you? Hey, happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you're Clementine in The Walking Dead. I'm Clementine in The Walking Dead. Thank you. <laughs> this has been an interview a long time coming. I, I enjoyed these I know, games. What's up? Dave Fenoy's always up here hogging all the spotlight. I'm so, what's up? He threatens me all the time. If I, if I don't, if I don't, you know, say that DaveFenoy.com at least wants to show, he calls and yells. <laughs> really, really hey, mad. girls are going. <laughs> threat, threat, threat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, know, you know those Dave calls well. Yes, I do. So, so many questions for you. Uh, number one, you don't look like Clementine or sound like her. You know, we have a lot no, of these, we have a lot of these voice actresses and voice actors on here. You're Dave Fenoy's, you're Courtney Draper's, and you're just like, you're, like, you're, you're, <laughs> you're Courtney. Draper. You're, you're not even you're, you're not even trying. That's just your real voice. Get out of here, you phonies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, no, indeed, I do not obviously sound anything like Clementine. So this isn't a, this isn't a one-off. You're you're, you're, you're a real voice person. This is your career. Uh, yeah, this is my career. This is, you just this start? is what I do. You're no. brand new at this? No! Man, I've been, what other games have you been? I know, God. Uh, I've been in several Telltale games. Oh. Back to the Future. Who were you in Back to the Future? Uh, Trixie Trotter. Oh! Yeah. Back to the Future. I got to sing, everybody. It was so much fun. I don't even know if that's her voice. I think that's her voice. That was, that was good. That was good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Um, I was on this little game called League of Legends. It's, I don't know, apparently it has a lot of fans. <laughs> so... Um, We're a DC Universe Online household here, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I know they're not the same thing. Don't worry. <sighs> um, but yeah, I've been doing this for like 13... I think I've been saying 13 years for like the last four years, so it's probably been longer. <laughs> Since like 2001. I don't know. Whatever. So I don't know what year it is right now. What drew what drew you to it? It's all you're drinking eggnog. Yes. There's whiskey floating around the building. The IGN laced. Uh, it still doesn't nog. sound right. <laughs> I know. And then don't look at the color. Just uh, yeah. never mind. No, no, don't worry Let's about it. Let's just not go there. Okay. So what drew you to voice acting? Um. How did you get into it? Well, I grew up doing theater. Uh, I grew up doing theater. Thank and you. yes. <laughs> And I just, I hit my mid-twenties about, and I had a friend who was, whose cousin was doing the tags for Sprint, like Sprint PCS, you know, sure. the, right now, get Sprint for it, and I was like, she's like this awesome woman, she's making money doing this, and I was just kind of in the ether of the universe, not knowing what I really wanted to be doing. Yeah. Um, so I uh, called up a friend of mine who happens to be my agent, Nate Tico, and he just started bringing me in for auditions, and I just immediately was like, have I been doing for all these years? I've wasted my early twenties. I'm losing all, all this these vocal power. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just uh, started auditioning, and all right. So let's jump. Here around. I am. We'll jump around all the boring games that didn't matter, and then you get to The Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did, that's... So did the, did you know you were going on a Walking Dead casting call? Did so they come to you? How did this all happen? Well, I got the auditions through my agency. And uh, you said Walking Dead on them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, at this point, I've already done at least five Telltale games. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, Slam dunk, the walking. I got this. Well, not even necessarily, actually. I still don't feel that way with them. I'm Clementine, bitches. And I still am like, God, I hope I get this part. Like, I still have to, like, audition, you know. Um, I just was really excited. I had no idea, uh, obviously, how huge this game would become. And, uh, but when I got the audition, I was just like, oh, cool, another Telltale game. Right. I just, I feel like I really, I feel like it was an instant connection with the character of Clementine. Granted, I had about four other auditions after that. So apparently... Uh, <laughs> they didn't they, feel it was Well, I mean, I think it's, she was such a, she's such a precious character. I mean, you're putting a kid in a video game as like one of the leads mm -hmm. and that can totally backfire because kids can be really annoying. No offense, kids. <laughs> but in games, they can be horrible. You're like, die, just die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Honestly, that's just how I feel yeah, in general about children. It yeah, have to be in just games. die. They're Why on the, are they're you on the here? Bus. Once this kid fell yeah, asleep they're on, the bus. On, on me, on the bus. <laughs> and I was like, that? die. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't show this to my nieces. You guys are great. I love you. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I uh, just I can't remember what the question was. We're stalking. Don't worry about the All question. Right. Drink some more of your eggnog. Yeah. Drink some more of your laced IG eggnog. <laughs> so, did you know what The Walking Dead was already? Yes. Like as a phenomenon yeah. kind of thing. I had already. I think season one of the show had already mm-hmm. been out. So I was already a big fan. Okay. Although I hadn't yet read the comics, uh, but I definitely was a fan of the show, and so therefore, obviously. Was there more pressure because of that? Like, I mean, obviously it was a little this, bit. the groundswell of the movement. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it, it was, it's a thing. It was already a show, because a lot of games that I've worked on with Telltale were, you know, games that, that just come up from the ground and are rooted and they think of and put it out there. This yeah. was, like, already something. Gotcha. And it was already huge. So it was definitely had more impact behind it. When did you know that this role was different than other ones? As far as like critical reception or I guess fans more than that. Clearly people well, like yeah, me were just like, this game's oh a nightmare, great. Yeah. We don't need to say it about well, everything. Well, the fans, I, that's so huge. I have never experienced such an amazing amount of love coming towards me for a character that I've mm-hmm. played. And I think unlike a lot of games I've been in, it's really rich with dialogue. Like, you know, there's, it's right. basically like watching an animated series where every once in a while you have to, you know, do this or make a decision. Um, <laughs> you know, so. Interactive drama. Yes, interactive drama. So it was, and it's episodic. So as time goes on, you know, in the first episode, we're kind of getting in there, feeling our characters, developing, and then just by the fifth episode, spoiler alert, of Again, season one. Again, we spoil one, stuff. Yeah, season one, I'm not going to say anything about season two. Um, you know, it was like real tears being shed, and in in this, it was just such an amazing, powerful experience for me as an actress. Is so, that, is that, do you get that kind of connection because you get to do something, see it develop, then come back to it, and kind of, you're, like you're iterating on it, rather than, I guess, like, you know, knocking it all out in a three-month period and being done? Right, yeah, yeah no, it was, and, well, when we got the scripts, I mean, people were playing the game, like, episode one was released, and, you know, they're coming out, like, every two months, so we'd start to record about a month before, right mm-hmm. around the time of the release. So, really, we were kind of right there with the players of the game and experiencing it for ourselves. Like, we'd get the synopsis, and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, this is going to happen. Oh, my God. You know, I think I found out about Lee uh, episode three. So mm-hmm. that just started to, like, it really helped to like just kind of like mentally get prepared for the horribleness the that's coming. Horde. And yes. then do you got do you guys record together or is it separate? No, we recorded everything uh, separate. Uh, the last episode, I didn't meet him until episode three. What? Yeah, I was like in Fairfax, Marin, where we record at Studio Jory, um, and he just was randomly walking down the street before my session, and I was just <laughs> like, <laughs> I was you like, didn't even meet him at the studio. Yeah. <laughs> no. Just like random. I was like, well, and it's Dave Fenoy, so yeah. there was no mistaking. I'm like, it's Dave Fenoy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and but it was instant. Just you know, we were instant bonded, bonded friends, That's and awesome. really happy to have him in my life and have shared that experience. Yeah. So. So at what point in season one did I mean? Are you always waiting to find out if you died? Did they tell you early on like season two is coming and you're gonna be you are in charge? This is all on yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. I mean, I you know had my theories just like everyone else. Right. But um, I don't think I was told that until about three months or so before we started recording for season two. Season two. Oh wow! So it was just this moment of kind of like, you know, <laughs> oh god, like so happy and very excited. But then at the same time, I'm like, oh man, this is this is big because people are used to protecting Clementine. Yeah. So well, yeah, everybody's waiting for you guys. To- up, right? We love season one. I know. <laughs> so oh, is trust season me. Season two going to be a train wreck. Let's when see. When this game was released, uh, what was that? Not yesterday. The day was that yesterday? <laughs> well, I don't even know. Well, this is pre-recorded, so let's just. Yeah, say, that's whatever. right. I'm just kidding. Ha. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it doesn't matter. Um, big sigh of, of relief. I just, it's, but you know, so much love and hard work went into it, and the writing again is just amazing. So I mean, I didn't. It's not like I was like, man, this is gonna bomb. I, I knew it was gonna. And it was going to be great. So, How did you approach excited. Clem differently for season two than you did season one? Or did you, I guess? Uh, well, she's older, yeah. Mm-hmm. she's And that was an adjustment. I definitely had to, like, kind of tweak. Like, I think at one point I sent them, like, 
seven different, not auditions, because I obviously had the part, but just like, all right, here's some examples of what she could sound like from like probably way too old to the fans would be like, no, you know what I mean? And we had to keep the Heads finesse. Heads up, fans are going to be like that no matter what about anything. Yeah, I know. No, <laughs> it's horrible. It sucks. Um, we, it just, it took some minor tweaking to get her uh, to, I think she originally was talking like this, and now she talks about like right here, so it's not that big of a difference, but... So it still has her tone. It's just that whole know. thing was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean that was. I think you know when we're just seeing stills and stuff like that, and even the teaser trailer, but not hearing her for when it was getting revealed for season uh, two, episode one. Right. I was like, oh, she's yeah. clearly older. I, it never dawned on me she'd sound different because I'm yeah. stupid and don't hang out with children. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, when there's the jump in the game, like, it's a stark difference because you the game's immediately reminding me what she sounds like as a child and then she's a little bit older, like, yeah. tweens or whatever. And it's like, oh, wow, well, okay. Yeah, that was definitely, like, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I, I just, I'm very aware of the, the fans' love for Clementine. So, yeah. I, in, in coming back to that voice, I was... Very like put my foot down. Like she has to still sound like Clementine. This can't sound, you know, like totally because I know she's been I through really so miss much. Lee. Yeah, no, hey, it's too bad about Lee. What a bummer. You know, what I mean, yeah, she's like she hasn't been drinking whiskey for the last two years. Oh, huh, she. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, and she goes through a lot more. I mean, this is her journey, and and it's it's really tough. She has to do a lot of really horrible, awful things. There's some like. Stuff. Sewing action <laughs> going on. Yeah. It, I mean, it was so much fun to record that. But I mean, when you watch it, it's just like it sucks it's to play it. it. Heads up for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, what, I mean, was there a concern on your part? You're, you're talking about how she needs to sound like Clem, obviously. Right. But then this is the first time where we get to choose how she talks and responds and does yeah. these different things. And like, you can be a bitch. Like, you can be a str- like, and, and I think yeah. a necessary bitch. A lot of right. people in that house suck. Don't worry about them. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? You get, to be, you get to be mean to these people. And that was a weird thing for this girl who was always just like, I don't know. Lee. Yeah, the innocent. Yeah, yeah. If you go down with laryngitis, I am right there for you. Yeah, I, know. I was just going to say, I'm like, damn, she I got to watch Jesus out. Girls, I miss duck. <laughs> Does she really miss duck? Everyone misses duck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Um, I know. Oh, for the, I'm not gonna pour that gonna out. I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dave Tool would get really mad if we pour stuff. Like yeah, that. Um, yeah. She's, um, of course. There's the three different ways to choose how she's gonna respond to mm-hmm. uh, all the different scenarios. Uh, and yeah, you can still kind of play the innocent edge, but there is definitely she stands her ground. Like she's not. She's, she's not a pushover anymore. She's not a pushover. Oh, she she's, ever, maybe I don't know. I don't know if she ever was, but she just, when she was younger, though, she definitely was more the, okay, you know, whatever it takes, you know, just kind of like, I'm going to yeah. follow the lead and you show me. And now she's. No, she was kind of a pushover. Remember when I was like, we're not going after your parents? And she just rolls over and cries. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. She was like. <laughs> Lee Everett. <laughs> the Greg Miller parenting skills. <laughs> she was eight years old. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's really cool. It's been cool to. Have I mean in season one I didn't really I I didn't have those options obviously sure. so it's been it's been really cool to she's like she's her own entity now and and she, the, her character is just so cool and I'm so proud to of of that character it's definitely yeah. one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Well, you do a fantastic so. job with it, Melissa. Well, thank you so much. No, thank you for, for, for not ruining your voice and listening to <laughs> the, you know, get in your 20s just saying, that's what I need to do, because it now paid off. Yeah. Your body of work before that, <laughs> whatever. But now, good life choice. Thank you. Thank no. you so much. Uh, do you know how it, it ends? When's Clem die? Is Kenny alive? I think Kenny's alive. <laughs> <laughs> So Luke is played by Scott Porter from Friday Night Lights. I can tell you that, okay, which is okay, pretty cool. Okay. Um, I cannot say. Um, do you know? Do you know? I I'll, haven't met him yet. We'll just stop. We'll just stop on the. I'm looking at me trying to like avoid. No, evade, do you avoid, know how, avoid. Do you know how it, the season ends for Clem? I actually, I can honestly say I, I don't. Okay, so you're still on the strategy I, of getting well, the script they, late. Well, you know, I think they have their, they have their theories. They, they're here somewhere. You tell, tell people. They, they know. <laughs> they're they, waiting with blow darts at any yeah, point for you to say, "That's what this is laced with." <laughs> <laughs> they, um, I think it really depends on like the release. I mean, 
it, they could have had it all planned out, but then with the release of this sure. episode, it might like, oh, okay, this is what fans are responding to. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. If I did know, I still wouldn't really no, I don't know. No, I, don't, I know you won't tell me. I don't know nothing about nothing. Yeah. <laughs> As always, silence is a valid option in The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you Greg so will remember this. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Thank remember, you. a full up at noon. We'll be back next Monday at noon Pacific Standard Time. You can come watch us make jokes, interview somebody else, and then we'll be in the comments the first hour of this video is live talking to you. To you. Until then, we're going to drink all this whiskey and go back to bed, but separate beds. <laughs> <laughs> Here. <laughs>